and these were actually considered industrial waste and used only in soap making until they made their way into our food system. Now the process of making these oils, it really isn't pretty. Oh goody, I thought I was done talking about seed oils. All right, so the fact that an ingredient used in food is also used in different industrial applications tells you absolutely nothing about that ingredient. Actually, using the term industrial in this way doesn't make any sense because these are food-grade seed oils that we're talking about in foods. Many different food ingredients are used in many different industries. Water, baking soda, acetic acid, aka vinegar, are used in many different industries. They're also used in food. It doesn't tell you anything about the ingredient itself. And also there are different grades of these ingredients. So there's technical grade, which is used in different industries, and then there's food grade, which is used in food. These seeds are heated to extremely high temperatures, which causes the delicate polyunsaturated fats in these seeds to oxidize. I hear this claim so often, but it's just not true. So in the refining process, yes, these oils are heated to a temperature that drives off volatile compounds, which actually makes the oil more stable. This is why refined oils have higher smoke points. And that temperature is lower than the temperature that would be needed to oxidize the oil. It's a steam distillation process that drives off the unwanted aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, and short-chain fatty acids. These are compounds which are more volatile than the oil itself. And again, this process actually makes the oil more stable so that it has a higher smoke point and it also has a longer shelf life. After this steam distillation process, the oil is then conditioned under nitrogen to prevent oxidation. Now these seeds are processed then with a petroleum-based solvent such as hexane, which you know I'm not a fan of. All right, so hexane is used to extract the oil and then the hexane is removed from the oil. This is a very efficient process that leaves very little to no hexane residue in the oil. Therefore, the resulting oil is not unsafe due to hexane, whether you are a fan of hexane or not. And the deodorization process produces trans fats, which all right, so yes, that deodorization process can create low levels of trans fats. Per specifications, certain oils have to be below either 1.5% by weight of trans fat or below 1% by weight, and typically they're much lower than this. So this is what she cited for the trans fat claim, which actually has nothing to do with that deodorization process. It has to do with different uh, cooking methods. So this just showed after certain cooking methods, corn oil had 0.25 grams of trans fat per 100 grams, and the rest of these oils had no detectable amounts of trans fat. So not only is that not relevant to the claim being made, but it also shows very low levels of trans fats. Finally, more chemicals are used to improve the color of these industrial seed oils. All right, so notice how she keeps calling them industrial seed oils, even though we're talking about food grade seed oils. So things like clays can be used to adsorb flavor, color, and other impurities from the oil. Again, removing these impurities is making the oil more stable and the shelf life longer and making a more neutral oil that can be used in many different applications. So that's pretty gross. So that's pretty gross, just kind of sums up this whole thing. So let's take a look at the actual evidence on health impacts, which shows, among other things, a reduction in coronary heart disease when saturated fats are replaced by mono and polyunsaturated fats. I will link these and many more studies in the comments.